In this video, we'll look at hypothesis testing using the TI-84 graphing calculator. And we'd like to use the full procedure and have all the information stored in a nice report. The first thing we want to do is write our hypothesis statements. For our example here, the first one, we'll be looking at testing the mean with Population standard deviation no. With all hypothesis tests, the first thing you want to do is set up your hypotheses. So we start off with H zero. H1, and then we decide whether we're using the mean or a proportion. We're using the mean here, so we put in the symbol for the mean, and it would go in both. And then we want to identify the alternative hypothesis from the claim. In this problem, we're looking at a person as a swimmer, an athlete, and they had a mean time of 16.43 seconds, and then they have a new pair of goggles. And the hypothesis test is to see whether the new goggles will help them swim faster. Swimming faster would mean having a greater average time, or sorry, a smaller average time. So um, mu here represents the average time with the new goggles, and the alternative hypothesis would be that the new time is less than the old time, which is 16.43. And from there, you can set up your null hypothesis to either be uh, greater than or equal or just equal to, and use the same number. So there we have our hypothesis statements. to state what type of test this is. This is a left-tailed test. And we like to state the level of significance. And that's given to be 0.05 and then we put in our sample statistics so we have a uh, oh and we have the uh, population standard deviation And that's given to us at the beginning in the bold. It says that his standard deviation for the uh, previous swims was 0 0.8, 0 0.8 seconds. And then uh, for the new thing, we have a sample mean is uh, 16 seconds. And uh, we're supposed to state what type of distribution we would use. And 
and it's a normal distribution since we know the population standard deviation. Let's put this here. All right. Next up, we want to calculate our p-value and compare that with alpha. And that's where we use the graphing calculator. So we'll pull up the graphing calculator. And we do stat. And we'll go over to tests. And since we're using the normal distribution for the mean, this would be a z-test. And we have the statistics rather than the data itself. So we keep it on stats. This first number is the one that appears in the hypotheses, 16.43 and we have our population standard deviation is 0.08 rather sorry 0.8 and then our sample mean is 16 and our sample size so it's not written down uh, 15 swims it says so n would be 15 So put 15 there. And then here you pick the alternative hypothesis, which would be a less than symbol. So we'd pick the one in the middle. And you can actually have it draw that if you like. We'll calculate it. And the p-value shows up as a lowercase p here, This, the third item from third line, second item with an equal sign there. So our... Uh, our p-value is about 0, 1, 8, 6, 8. All right, and that's what we use the graphing calculator for. And you can use that for getting the uh, graph as well. Let's go to draw see a nice picture there and you can use that to get the picture of the p-value. p-value is that red shaded area there. So I can use that and you can take a picture with your phone if you don't have, or I don't have the emulator. You can take a picture of that uh, calculator screen. And, uh, and then we want to make our decision. So the decision is what? Well, you compare the p-value to alpha, the level of significance. p is less than alpha, so we reject the null hypothesis. And we reject it because p is less than alpha. All right, now we make our conclusion. And uh, since you reject the null, that means you would support the alternative hypothesis. So we say that the uh, sample data supports the claim that, and we're going to figure out what this means, that uh, Jeffrey's mean time is oh, say Jeffy Jeffrey swims faster with the new pair of goggles. There we go. And that's a complete hypothesis test there using the p-value method. Now, this could be done different ways depending on whether we had sample data or not. If I was given sample data, then I would have to calculate the sample mean and sample size. And on the graphing calculator, 
I would then need to change this first option from So if I had, sorry, we had a, a quick issue. If we had uh, sample data, we would still go to stat, tests, and z-test. Um, but the first option, we would switch to data there. And uh, we would actually have the data stored in list L1. All right, remember stat, edit, and you would put your data in here, one by one. And then stat, tests, and you would tell it data. Now you still would have the same number at the top, be the 16.43 and the same standard deviation 0.8 and in L1 you would have the 15 uh, swim times from Jeffrey and the uh, everything else would stay the same and it would of course give you the same results assuming the average of those times was 16 and there were 15 of them so uh, just remember how we did that for the intervals I don't have uh, time to do an example for all these. Um, I'll do one more example for the mean though and so we'll kind of copy this down and example two will be when the standard deviation is unknown So uh, again, the first step is determine whether it's the mean or the pop proportion you're testing, and here it's clearly the mean. Um, then to try to translate that uh, claim into the alternative hypothesis. You see here we have uh, statistics students with an average score of 65, and an instructor thinks that the mean score is um, higher than that. So the students think that the average is 65, and the instructor thinks that it's higher than that. So the instructor's claim would be, because he's the one doing the test, right, that the mean test score is greater than 65. And the students think that the mean score is 65. So it's kind of, their claim is the null hypothesis. This results in a right-tailed test. It is not a normal distribution that will follow, it is the t distribution since we don't know sigma. Level of significance is the same, but you would put that in. Um, we will have a sample standard deviation and that would then be not sigma but s. and a sample mean and a sample size. Um, so there are some scores given here and we'll put that data in there and, and calculate these things in a minute. So let's, uh, let's do that. So now we're working with a t-test because we know we're using the t-distribution. So go to stat and tests and go down to t-test. We actually have the data so we do need to put that in first. So really go stat, edit, and we'll put in those scores. We have a 65, 65, 70, 67, 66, 63, 63, 68, 72, and 71. So the test scores are in. Now stat, tests, t-test. And we want to select data, because we have the data in there. And then the uh, number in the hypothesis is 65. And the data is in L1. And the alternative hypothesis is this one on the right with the greater than symbol. And we can calculate the p-value along with the sample statistics. So it tells us that s is... 3.2 about, right, 3.2. And the sample mean is 67. And the sample size is 10. 
and the p-value is 0 0.0396. And we can get that graph again. Okay, you can hand draw this sketch or uh, get a photo of it. There's the new picture. And in this problem, we will again reject. The p-value is still less than alpha, so we reject the null hypothesis. And so the sample data does support the claim again. Um, hopefully we'll see the other situation. But in case it doesn't, right, when p is greater than alpha, then we fail to reject the null. And you say the sample data does not support the alternative. Um, so what is the claim in this case? The claim that uh, the mean test score was greater than 65 or higher than 65 is what it says there, but this works fine. All right, and that's a finished hypothesis test showed us using data and using the T distribution. So the only thing we need to see still is a two-tailed test and to look at the uh, case of a proportion. And so let's hopefully we can get get all that in the next example. So here we're testing the uh, proportion. Alright, this gets us a two-tailed test and hopefully gets us the uh, fail to reject case as well. Alright, so reading through you see that you got percentages, so you know you're working with a proportion, so let's put P's in the test. And from the wording it says, uh, performs a hypothesis test to determine if the percentage is the same or different from 50%. So that tells you that it's a not equal to case, right? The same is the null, or different. Just being different could be greater than, could be less than. That is the alternative case. So we want the not equal to symbol. And, uh, and from 50% tells us that we want 50% uh, here. All right. So this is a two-tailed test. And with these, are we using the normal distribution? And the reasoning has to do with the um, sample size and the value of p. Um, so you'd have to check that the uh, variance of this distribution was greater than 10. Um, but more or less, we're not going to be looking at any proportion test that won't use the normal distribution. So we'll say normal distribution since it's a proportion test with large sample size. Right? We didn't look at any small sample sizes. All right. Uh, level of significance in this one is 1%, so we're going to do 0.01. And the uh, sample statistics will have a um, sample proportion and so that'll be a P, so we're using P prime and uh, sample size is 100 and then we'll have a calculated p-value okay so let's go to the calculator and put this in there we go to stat and tests and this time we go to number five one prop z test and we put in the 0.5 the number from the hypothesis 
put that at the top and then your sample size is 100 and then we need the number of successes which is 53 so we know our sample proportion is 0.53 then select the first one that's for the two-tailed test and then have it calculate that there. So this tells us the sample proportion and the p-value. For... Now there's two p's when you do this, so watch the p-hat with the little carrot on top, that's the sample proportion. Um, that's a common notation is to use a p-hat. Uh, the regular p with nothing on top, that's your p-value. So five four and here is you know they're both decimals so they they can be confusing five four eight five is what we'll use and so you know already that uh, p is greater than alpha so we will fail to reject so this is great we get to see everything and we'll draw it and you see the test. Drawn. You can see those tails are really big. That's clearly more than 1%. In fact, it's about half of the whole area, right? So the p-value is the area of those two tails. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis since p is greater than alpha. Uh, so the sample data fails to support the claim. Now we'll go back to the claim um, that the that the percentage of first-time brides in the United States um, younger than their grooms is different from 50%. So let's see, let's put that in there. Percentage of first time brides in the U.S. that are younger and their grooms is different from 50%. So even though we had a sample that was different from 50%, it wasn't different enough. So we don't have enough evidence to, uh, to say that it actually is different. All right, and that would uh, wrap it up. All right, and I'll post this uh, document for you to be able to look at.